Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks with ADSR. And you're checking out a serum tip and trick tutorial video. So this was something that I actually had to, when I wanted to do this, I actually had to stop and think and be like, okay, how am I gonna achieve this inside of Serum? And what we're gonna be looking at in this video is how you can basically turn off an LFO. Now this is really helpful for future bass, dubstep, any type of genre of music where you're using, where you're making use of the LFOs to modulate things like your cutoff, maybe even your wavetail positions. So this would even be helpful for pads and evolving atmospheres as well, depending on how you choose to implement it. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at how you can turn off the LFO using a macro control. So if that doesn't make any sense to you, <laughs> don't worry. I want this to be both kind of a beginner, beginner and intermediate uh, video. So if you don't know what an LFO is, stands for low frequency oscillator. It's things that make dubstep basses go wub, wub, wub. And basically what it is, is it's, it's such a low pitch. We can't hear it. We can only have its, we can only understand its perceived effect on a sound. So applying an LFO to a filter gets that v -v 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 type sound. Well, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a macro. And a macro inside of a synth is a way to control multiple parameters, things like the filter, the wavetail position, envelopes, effects, that sort of stuff, with one easy to use and easy an easily assignable knob. So you can really easily assign this, for instance, to your mod wheel. Uh, you can basically set a macro in Serum more specifically to control as many parameters as you want. Now we're gonna be having to tie this, this specific macro to eight separate parameters to get it to turn off the LFO. And what it's gonna do is by the flick of a knob or a slider on your keyboard or actually in Serum, you can really easily automate the change in. So we have a little like future bass thing going here and we're gonna look at this. So this track right here, it's coming from Serum, let's check it out. All right, so this knob right here is aptly called no LFO and it's set up to, it is assigned to eight different destinations throughout the synth and we're gonna recreate that effect. But let's say I wanted to do this effect and automate it in as I go. So we're gonna do this in real time, so I might mess up, but I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard and we're gonna go to touch. So then anything I touch on Serum will be written in to automation. So I'm gonna record this in. All right, so I just automated that in, and let's get this off a of touch for now and change it to read so I won't make any accidental changes. Let's listen to that with the drum. All right, let's get the volume down for when I open up the, or turn off the filter rather, or turn off the LFO on the filter. so they're more equal. And basically what we did was we just found a way to really easily turn off the LFO. Now it's getting a little bit louder because obviously the LFO is, as it's tied to things like the filter and the level of the oscillators in this example, it's gonna turn stuff down, so far up. All right, so that's gonna work for now. So that's what we're gonna be learning to do inside of Serum in this video. Like I said, it works for tons of different applications, not just future-based stuff. So to do this, the easiest way to do it is Serum affords you two different ways to drag or to do uh, modulation. And macroing is if you've ever used Massive, you take these crosshairs and you can drag and drop them onto various parameters. Well, it's First, when I sat down to do this, I was like, okay, what if I just turn the delay off on, or macro the delay, or turn down the rate, right? Well, you can only do that with, you can only change and use a macro control, you can see here, on the rate. You can't put it on rise, delay, and smooth on the, 
LFOs. So that's not going to help. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to go to your matrix. Now you're not going to be using straight up drag and drop modulation. It's easier to do this in the matrix, in my opinion. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to investigate the patch, especially if you didn't make it. You want to know what LFO is making your sound move. In this example, it's LFO tool two. I have LFO two affecting the noise level the level of the oscillators, both A and B, and then my cutoff filter. So what we're going to do here is we're going to clear out of this no LFO macro. I am going to basically have it bypass everything. Okay. So now that are, that's the first step is uh, to investigate your sound and see what is controlling what. So now if we play this, there's not going to be any sound. And that's fine. Because basically, with when we just investigated the sound, we saw that the le the LFO was controlling the level of our oscillators. So we basically just turned those down, right? So now what we need to do, the first thing you're going to do is make up for all of the things you just turned off by taking our not this not necessarily turn off, but you're going to have to when you want to take the LFO out of the sound, you don't have to make up for it. So if the LFO is controlling the level, you need to make up for that amount with the macro. So what we're gonna do is we will drag and drop that on this. So we're gonna turn it all the way up, just like the LFO would. And we can turn it down just a pinch maybe, but I already automated the sound. So that is gonna be controlling our sound. So now when I flick this up, we have sound, right? So that is important, and we want to do that as well with the noise because the LFO was manipulating the noise as well. So we're going to want to pop this on the cutoff filter too. All right, so there is the sound with no LFO in our first macro. All right, so that is essentially it, and then you can change those parameters. So. Every anytime you do this in Serum, you're gonna have to double your kind of macro count here. Remember, I said it was at eight. Well, the reason it was at eight is because we not only have to turn off the LFO, we have to turn off what the LFO was basically keeping on for us. So now we need to take this and we're gonna go to the matrix. And on all of the LFO twos, what I'm gonna do here is and this was already kind of set up. By default, you have a source, you have an amount, a destination, and then you have this mod section. Well, you're gonna want to invert all of the mods. So all of the modulations you want invert. So instead of turning it on, it's gonna turn it off. So for instance, all you have to do in this example is search for your LFOs. So we only have one LFO, so LFO2 filter cutoff. What we're gonna do here is we are gonna go to an aux source which is basically going to have a auxiliary source like a macro control our source and destination of the LFO2 running into the filter cutoff. So this macro four is now controlling these two parameters, hence like what I said at the beginning of the video, a macro. But we want this to do an inversion, so it's actually gonna turn off that effect. Now I'm gonna go through real quick, I'm gonna select macro, actually it's macro three, not macro four, because that's the one that's titled no LFO. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do that on all of the source and destinations of the LFO2 being my source. So here is the uh, LFO2 right here running into B volume. So we're gonna go macro three and we are going to invert it. Then we are gonna go down, down here, LFO2 A volume. This is the volume of the oscillators. We're gonna invert this and macro three. And now we're gonna go to LFO2 noise level going to invert that and now macro three. Now the sound should be back at what it was at the beginning of the video. So let's check it out. There it is. As I turn the no LFO knob, which I automated in the beginning of the video, it turns off the automation or the, uh, the automation turns off the LFO. Let's listen. All right, guys, there you go. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I am Echo Soundworks. If you haven't subscribed to ADSR's YouTube channel, definitely do that, especially if you like my videos and the other videos on the network. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.